All right, men, welcome to today's episode. We're going to be talking about faith in marriage, how to keep going when the going gets tough. So, you know, lately I've been, you know, on the message boards and hearing from my clients and, you know, sometimes it can just be sort of hard, right? It's hard sometimes to keep going, especially when you're trying to do what's right. You're trying to be nice. You're trying to be kind. You're trying to serve and your wife just isn't responding, right? She doesn't seem to care. Maybe she's even mean to you when you're trying to be nice, right? So maybe she's saying, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. And no matter how hard you try, she just doesn't seem to, quote, have those feelings, right? That can be really frustrating because you're trying to do what's right. You're trying to be romantic and nice, and she just doesn't seem to respond to it. Maybe you're close to divorce, and you're trying to get her back, and you're trying to get her back, and you're trying to be nice, but she just still says, I want that divorce. Maybe there's little to no sex in your marriage and, and you're, you know, trying to serve, you're trying to, to do those things that sometimes you just get so frustrated because you're not, you know, having that as part of your marriage. Or you're just not getting that appreciation that you're hoping for. Uh, you know, you try to do nice things, but it just seems like it's not enough or, you know, either she doesn't say thank you at all or she says, well, yeah, you know, you, you wiped the counter, but it wasn't as clean as I wanted it. <laughs> I bring that one up a lot. That happened in my marriage. Or just neglecting over time, right? So, um, you know, just if you weren't there for something important for her, or if she asked you to come home and you just didn't come home, if she was struggling with the kids and needed help and you weren't there, right? Those those things are damaging. And, you know, as you come back, you're like, hey, like, I'm trying to change. I want to be there. Uh, a lot of times your wife still won't really trust that. And that can be hard, right? It can be discouraging when you're trying to do what's right and you're just not seeing any results. Recovering after an affair, big one, right? You can say sorry as many times as you want, but it seems like it just doesn't make a difference. She still has that hard heart. She still is remembering that affair. It's hard for her to get past it. And part of you is like, hey, well, what's the point? You know, why am I trying so hard here? Working through pornography, recovering from pornography, same idea, right? You're like, no, I, I'm not using it. Um, but your wife still is like hesitant to have sex or she still doesn't quite trust you or she's, you know, worried about the example on the kids. And, you know, you keep saying sorry, but it just doesn't seem to be making a difference. You know, and, you know, you, you you brought it on yourself in these things and you understand that. But still, like sometimes it can just get tiring to, to keep trying when, you know, your wife doesn't seem to see your efforts or appreciate them. And maybe some of you, you're not really sure what you've done. I don't know why my wife's like this. Um, if that's true and you don't know, it's time to figure that out. <laughs> All right. So sit down, really try to figure it out. Even if she says, I don't know. It's probably one of these things. Usually it's something big like an affair or pornography or something like that. Or it's kind of like small things over time, not being there for her at important moments, um, you know, not showing up, being at work too much, not uh, helping out, not being a partner at home with cleaning or with the kids. And over time, you know, women, they just get tired of that. Um, so it's probably one of those things. So, again, if you come up to your wife, and you're like, hey, is it these things? She's going to be impressed. <laughs> So again, when you've brought it on yourself with an affair or pornography or neglect over time, another one that, that comes up sometimes is like this holier than thou attitude. Like, um, you know, for, for me, for a while, I felt like, you know, because my wife wasn't as like reading the scriptures as much that I was like better than her in some way. And people don't really want to be around that, you know? It's not a good feeling. I've had other clients where, you know, their wife has uh, had sex before marriage and they haven't, and they can take this attitude like, well, you know, you're worse than me because you did that. And again, that's just not something women really enjoy being around that attitude. No one likes it, right? No one likes to be around someone who thinks they're better than them. So how do you, so what do you do? So you've heard me say this before, but I'll repeat it here. You commit to changing, right? You commit to becoming a better person whether your wife sees and appreciates that change or not, right? You just say, look, I'm going to be this guy, whether she likes it or not, right? You do it because you want to be that kind of guy, you know, the kind of guy that is faithful to his wife, that doesn't look at pornography, that takes care of his wife, you know, that sees her as equal, not better or worse than himself. You know, you want to be that guy. If you've broken that house of trust, either by knocking it down with an affair or taking bricks out one at a time by just, you know, not paying attention or, you know, not helping keep the house clean or take care of the kids, right? We want to rebuild that house of trust, right? 
And just keep in mind, right? Your goal is to be trustworthy. It's not necessarily for your wife to give you her trust, okay? So trust is the fruit of trustworthiness. So we're working on becoming trustworthy, being men of our word. It feels great and it's attractive to her, okay? And it's something 100% within our control. It's an internal win. It's not an external win. So when we focus on this, you know, it's it's powerful, right? We feel more empowered because it's within our control. But, right, even when we do this, right, we remind ourselves of this and all of that. In the back of our minds, we're like, man, you know, there's got to be, at some point, I do want something back for all of this, right? I'm doing these things, but, you know, you can lose motivation sometimes, Right especially if you're getting evil back for good, right? You're, you come and you get your wife flowers and she throws them in the trash. Uh, you say, hey, you know, I care about you. Your wife says, well, I don't care about you. You say, I love you. Your wife says, well, I don't love you, right? That's hard. It's hard to keep going. It's hard to keep, you know, being that kind of guy when you're getting not just nothing back, but negative back, right? It's tough. Part of us says, you know, what's the point of this? So what I've learned over time is that, you know, making this commitment is important, but it also requires one more thing, and that is faith, okay? So what is faith? In this case, faith, it's believing that as you put good out into the world, as you serve, as you become trustworthy, as you um, are the kind of guy you want to be, right? As you put that good out, that good will come back to you, okay? It's believing that, trusting that, having faith in that. That as you change, right, you become more trustworthy, you're choosing to serve your wife, you stop being a mosquito or a dictator, right? As you make those changes, good will eventually come back to you. Keeping that faith, it's so important. You know, having that belief, that trust, saying, look, you know, I'm, I'm doing these things, I'm, I'm putting these bricks down, at some point, good will return to me, right? And this is, it's an eternal principle, guys, Right? You know, in, in some faith traditions, it's called karma, right? What you send out comes back to you. And in, in our scriptures, the Book of Mormon, Alma 41.10 talks about what you send back will return unto you again, right? In the Jesus taught with what judgment ye judge with that judgment, ye shall also be judged. In other words, you know, the way that we treat others, eventually it comes back to us, right? It really does, okay? It's an eternal principle. But here's the hard part. It's almost always delayed, almost always. Okay. So I want to tell you guys a story. It's the parable of the, the Chinese bamboo tree. I think it'll help illustrate this for us. So a man once planted a bamboo tree. His teacher told him to go out every day and water the tree. The man, he did as he was told. He faithfully watered the plant every day. And after the end of one year, nothing happened. Okay. Not one sprout. Didn't see anything. So the man went to his teacher and he asked, hey, what's the point of this? Nothing is happening. And I'm not going to go water this plant anymore. Okay, it's been a year. I went out every day. That's enough. But his teacher just said, keep watering, have patience, have faith. The man was angry. You know, he's like, yeah, this, this guy he doesn't know what he's talking about. But he decided to listen to his teacher. And for another full year, he went out and he watered that plant every day. At the end of that second year, still nothing. Two years every day, putting in the effort, getting out there, putting the water in. Two years, nothing. So now this man was very upset with his teacher. He says, it's been two years. I've been watering this plant every day. Look, it's time to give up. This seed is no good. This plant is not going to grow. There's no point. Maybe I should just find another seed. Maybe I should water another plant, right? But his teacher just said, Listen, keep watering, have patience, and have faith. The man at this point, he was fuming, so mad. He threw down his watering can, ran, ran over to his room. He asked himself, what's the point of all this? Why am, I out, why am I out here in the hot sun killing myself every day? This plant will not do anything. Nothing's happening. All my effort has been wasted, and it is time to move on. But... Something else inside of him also said, hey, listen, you've put in this much and you might as well keep going. So for two more full years, this happened. Okay? He watered every day and every day, nothing. 
at the end of each year, he'd go to his teacher, and his teacher would say, keep watering, have patience, have faith. But as those next two years passed, the man started to change. He started to look for some of the good. He started to enjoy being outside. He started to enjoy watering the plant. He started to see the benefit of putting consistent effort into something and felt good about doing that. He was becoming a guy who would show up and do something even when it was hard through this whole process. But there's still a part of him that said, you know, what's the point, right? That would come up sometimes. But he also started to believe that his teacher wouldn't have him keep watering if something wasn't going to happen. In other words, he started to replace that doubt and that anger with some faith, right? He said, look, my teacher, he wouldn't leave me wrong on this, right? I trust this guy. So it's been four years now. As the man walked out with his watering can on the first day of the fifth year, after watering every day for four straight years, he saw a sprout. Hey, he was overjoyed. He was ecstatic. He ran to tell his teacher. His teacher said, that's wonderful. You know, congratulations. But just wait. Over the next seven days, the bamboo tree grew 90 feet tall. So four years, nothing. Then in seven days, 90 feet. The man was amazed and overjoyed at these results. He asked his teacher, how is this possible? His teacher said the roots were growing the whole time. Every day of watering made those roots grow. Without that consistent effort, the roots would have died and you never would have seen this growth. It's that consistent effort, guys. So listen, in your marriage, every kind and good action that you are taking is planting and watering the seed. You are in a position where you might have to really grow up spiritually, you know, be able to bless them that curse you or do good to them that hate you. It is not easy. It's very hard. But this is what builds your strength. This is what builds your character. This is what builds that house of trust. This is what puts those roots in yourself where you start feeling like you're the type of man that can do this and you're becoming that kind of man. Okay? It is hard. It can be very difficult especially as you're doing this and your efforts seem to be making no difference in your wife at all, right? She seems even more mad or just no change at all. It is hard. But listen, guys, have faith. Have faith. You are becoming a stronger, better, and a more attractive person through this process. That is happening 100%. If you will commit to it and do it consistently, you're getting stronger, you're getting better, you're getting more attractive, 100%. One day, you'll start to see that, and you'll start to know that for yourself. You'll start to feel good about who you are as a person, and that's a huge win in itself. The other thing that happens after that is that others are going to start to see that as well. They're going to see that you are stronger, you are better, you are more attractive. You know, your your wife's going to look back, and she's going to say, man, you know, through all that time when I was being so rude and I wasn't, you know, appreciating your efforts at all, you still were consistent. Okay, one day she's going to be able to see that. Okay, God's going to see that. He's going to see, yeah, like you are growing. You're becoming the type of man that I want you to be. Your children are going to see that. They're like, man, you know, mom's kind of being rude to dad, but, you know, he's still showing up. He's still being kind. You know, he's still serving her. And your wife's going to see that, right? Even if it does end up in divorce, right? She's still going to see like, hey, you know, this guy's a good guy. I, I want him around my kids. You know, he's he's doing he's doing good things here. Or, you know, you know, if it does end in divorce, you're, it'll attract another woman to you. You know, if you, you can listen back to, uh, to Jeff's story on the podcast about that, um, you know, he made these changes. It was kind of too late for his first marriage. Uh, another guy I've worked with, Scott, it was kind of like that too. But because he developed these strengths and skills, he was a much more attractive man. And he drew someone else to him. And, you know, he's still a great example to his kids. And they're able to work that out a lot better because of the, the things that they have built right? They built those roots. They built that foundation. And eventually the tree grew, right? So guys, listen, good, it will come. Okay, it will come. Another story about a guy who worked with Aaron, you know, he had been unfaithful. Um, 
really went through the the process, the Superman system, and became that guy, right? Stepped into really who he could be, became stronger, became more attractive. And it took a long time. It took, you know, years of doing that. But then his wife saw it, right? She saw it. She saw he was attractive. She saw he was a different guy and came back and they have an amazing marriage now. Scott, I mentioned, you know, his, you know, he came to me when he was like one signature away from divorce, but he still went through the process. He still learned. He became a stronger guy emotionally, mentally, spiritually, sexually. And, you know, that divorce went through, but he was able to attract an amazing woman to him because he then knew these skills. Right. So Thomas, um, another guy that, um, excuse me, you know, I was able to work with and he was able to see um, you know, really, uh, quicker results, you know, he's able to learn these, these skills and really kind of turn things around, uh, around very quickly. Um, and then Josh, um, you know, is kind of in, in the middle of it right now where, you know, he's, he's actually in there. He's living with a wife who is, you know, actually his ex-wife still with him and, but he's still in this process, right? Um, becoming that greater man and feeling just great about it and having faith, right? That good is going to come. So we're all at different stages of this, right? And for me, right, for a long time, my my issue in my marriage was, um, you know, not having sex often and being upset about that. But as I learned these strengths and skills that I'm teaching you guys, you know, I felt better about who I was. Eventually that made her more attractive to me and we could work it out, right? We could work out something that worked for both of us from a sexual standpoint. So listen, guys, good will come, I promise you, you know, have faith, continue to do good, continue to serve, Uh, even when you're getting bad back, you know, that's, that's kind of the big test of, of spiritual strength. So guys, listen, keep watering, have patience, have faith, stay strong, men. I'll see you next episode.